whenever we are making a changes that should not affect the content on the existing thing so here it will be considered as a quality assurance activity we wanted to incorporate a changes then that is also may increases the efficiency or the productivity of a software that is also helpful with the help of this scm as per the requirement of a project or by the requirement of a customer we have to make a changes in a configuration hello everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome to the last session of this unit as well as the portions as well as syllabus of this software engineering bcs 6 semester subject so in our today's session we're going to learn about this scm and important very very important kokomo model i'm rohini ts department of computer science vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru so before getting into our today's last session we'll going to just have a quick recap of our previous session in the last session of this unit we had a discussion regarding this spm that is software project management you can expect this for 2 marks or 5 marks even for 8 or 7 marks question and also we got to know what do you mean by cost estimation and also I discussed regarding what do you mean by project scheduling, why we have to schedule a project, how we are going to schedule a project and how much time it will going to require that needs to be estimated and also we got to know regarding this project staffing that's all related to human resources or a personnel. So that is the number of humans or number of human resources which is required in order to complete a project within a given time and budget that we are estimating in the project staffing. So in our today's session and last session of this unit we will be learning regarding this SCM that is software configuration management and at last we'll see one of the cost estimation model in that we have a Kokomo model and Delphi model when it comes to the importance we have to concentrate on this Kokomo model very very important question surely you can expect this questions in your question paper We'll see the first topic that is related to software configuration management. In short, it is SCM. Then why we need to manage a software configuration? So configuration is all related to what uh, some changes. Whether we are adding a new software, a new group, a new team, or if you are changing anything in a complete software project, then we will be calling that as a software configuration. Management of that changes whatever we are including or incorporating to the software project needs to be managed well. So here in the software configuration management is a branch of software engineering. It provides a better process to handling, organizing and controlling the changes in the requirements. So here we can have a changes in the requirements or with respect to the code or programming and teams and other elements in the software project development life cycle in short that is SDLC whatever the number of phases we have in a SDLC whatever the changes that we wanted to incorporate for that changes this SEM will going to help us a lot by processing or providing a better process of handling that organizing that controlling that monitoring that Whatever the changes we are incorporating, everything will going to be managed by this SCM. Mainly this will deal with a version selection and tracking the changes and version control of a software project. First we have to concentrate on this version selection. That means what needs to be changed, whether I wanted to change the requirement or uh, I wanted to change the team or any other elements of a SDLC. First that needs to be identified then we have to track that at last the version control of a software project and with a high productivity and minimize the errors or risk factor mainly we have to improve the performance or maximize the performance or efficiency and we have to reduce or minimize the errors or risk factor so here in the SCM is a set of activities that have been developed to manage the change throughout the life cycle of a computer software so it's not only at the time of design not only at the time of coding so this SEM will going to help in order to manage the changes whatever we are having in a STLC and also 
This can be viewed as a software quality assurance activity. So why? Because whenever we are making a changes that should not affect the content on the existing thing. So here it will be considered as a quality assurance activity. So though we are doing all the changes or if you are incorporating certain uh, changes or certain update to the system that should not affect the content of existing software. So it has to improve its performance or efficiency by doing this configuration management. It's considered as one of the tool which we are going to use the software development lifecycle process in order to track the changing and managing the configuration item. So that can be as I told earlier, it can be requirement codes, documents, defect, resources, budgeting, software, hardware, anything it can be that will be inside the product or a project development. And also, who is going to do this SCM or who will be able to manage the software configuration? Who will be there? Then it includes the project manager, developers will be there. Why? Because if I wanted to do any changes with respect to the code, without taking a permission of developers, we can't do. And being a user, we don't know how they code it. That's why we require this developers and configuration manager and the product owner as well as we require the tester to change the or to test the changes whatever has been made to the system or STLC process. So these are the people who is going to be involved in the SCM process. So next we'll see what are the processes we have in our SCM, how we are going to do all these processes, how management of software configuration will taking place by the help of these processes. First it includes planning and identification of processes. First I have to identify what needs to be changed, whether we wanted to change the defects or any errors is there that we wanted to change, we have to plan and we need to identify that. Then version control processes or baseline. Next we have a change control processes. Once it got changed then how it is behaving that needs to be checked here. Then configuration release processes. Once it got fixed that needs to be released back. Then configuration auditing process then review and status reporting process. We'll see each stage one by one right now. First what we have planning and identification process. What we have to plan and what we have to identify in the first stage of SEM. Here you can see that it will be considered as a initial stage. Why? Because we are starting with the planning and identification of that process. So here to planning properly for the development of the application and identifies the configuration items. So here we have to identify which needs to be configured. So that needs to be identifier and we have to plan as per the scope of the project, as per the requirement of a project or by the requirement of a customer, we have to make a changes in a configuration. And then we have to conduct certain meetings and uh, by having certain meeting, we have to have a quick start of this planning and identification of a process. What is the second stage? That is version control process or baseline. Very, very important word. So whenever you are writing a answer for a given question, you have to mention the key points there. So here also you need to concentrate that as baseline here. Then what do you mean by baseline or uh, what is this version control process? Mainly the version control or baseline indicates to store the different version of the development or configuration by changing the scope or requirements or code or software environment. So I need to check, I need to change the configuration in all the aspects. So we have to do the trial and error process in this version control process. So we have to check the efficiency of a software in all the versions and in all the scope. We have to change the scope, we have to change the code requirement and even the software environment. Everything needs to be changed. We have to do the trial and error in order to get the best one. That's what we are doing in the version control process or baseline. So this process provides several versions of that software product. Amongst that, we have to choose which is the best one in order to satisfy the requirement of a customer. Next what we have change control process. So now we got to know which is the best one and we had a different versions of a particular product. Then what about this change control? In this process new change request created by the client to change some configuration on the software product. For example you had a different version 
So a uh, user may not like the version that you had produced. So they may come up with new changes or if they wanted to delete the content, if they wanted to update the content, whatever has been developed that will going to be conducted in this stage three. That is what change control process. So they will come up with a certain requirement. Maybe what uh, they can add or they can remove or edit on the configuration item as the request is received by the team. So based on the request of a team, they are going to change the configuration or they will edit or remove or they can add the content to there. Next, we have a configuration release processes. So once first we have to plan and identify then different version will be produced. After that, based on the requirement of a customer, based on the requirement of a team, they are going to make all the changes. Then they have to release that. What is that? This process is used to ensure the application will develop as per the project plan. So we should not simply configure or manage anything without having a plan. So here, that needs to be done as per the project plan and test or verify the application as per the scope. So whether it is satisfying the scope of this project. So with these two parameters like project plan and scope, we have to process that the software related documents and software release notes are inputs and to provide a working version of the software application. So here we are taking an input. What we are taking as an input here, software related document and software release document. All the notes will be given as an input. Whenever we are giving that as an input, at last as an output, we will be getting a new versions or new changes whatever the configuration that has been made to the system will be given as a working version of the software application that will be done in the stage 4. Next we have a configuration auditing processes. As you know that in general auditing what they will going to do so they will verify the developed software product as per the baselines or not. Is this as per the requirement? Is this the changes which has been given by the team that and all will going to be examined in this stage 5. After that here we go for functional requirement audit and physical audit of a software application. By auditing these two we can get the resultant. We will see the last stage of this processes of SCM review and status reporting process. So review is what we will be taking a feedback from the customer or by the team which uh, wanted to have a changes in a software. It is a technical review on the application workflow processes, configuration items and change requests etc to generate the status report in every phase of a software development life cycle process. So in this last stage what they will be doing? So they will be taking a review. They are giving an input and they are checking the output. Are we getting a proper input or output? That and all will going to be checked and they are taking a feedback and they are reviewing it. So that may be related to application workflow, processes, configuration item, all the changes requested, whatever it has been given as a input, everything will going to be checked. So that will be done for every phase of a SDLC like it will be for the SRS and for designing, development, testing for all the stages of SDLC this will going to take place. So these are the processes which we have in a SCM or a software configuration management. Then what are the advantages we have in it? We'll see now. Mainly this will increase the productivity efficiency of a software as controls and tracking the workflow or development process. And also mainly this will going to help us in order to have a change management so that the risk of a product will be less. If I wanted to change but if it is static, we can't change the uh, configuration then that would be very difficult. So in order to do that, uh, this SEM will going to help us and it is used for proper monitoring and auditing of a software development product and also help to enhance the software development life cycle processes. So if you wanted to incorporate a changes, then that is also may increases the efficiency or the productivity of a software. That is also helpful with the help of this SCM and this process provides reliable, we can trust it and it is organized one along with cost effective, it's not so costly. Then low risk software development application and also it provides a high quality software product. So what else we require than this SCM? So these are the different advantages we can get with the help of this SCM.
if there is a advantages there could be some disadvantages also right what it is so it needs adequate resources if i wanted to do the changes then i require a adequate resources enough resources must be there with full knowledge about the software configuration management tools so instead of knowing all these things if we are simply uh, doing a changes or making a updation to the system or the product then that would be difficult one so we have to have a full knowledge regarding scm tools and it requires more resources to work with the configuration management processes for small industry so if you are considering the small industries then it would be difficult or costly for them in order to have all the tools of scm and also it requires a highly configured desktop or laptop for the development stages highly configured systems we require in order to do this changes it's all regarding scm and it's very very important you can expect it for 8 7 or even 10 marks question software configuration management system all the phases you need to explain along with the advantages and disadvantages we'll see the next concept that's regarding quality what do you mean by quality if you consider any of a product project software we always fond of this quality right it's what a characteristics or attribute of something so if i wanted to say this is qualitative one then certain parameter or with certain attribute we are going to measure it that is what a quality refers to the measurable characteristics for example it can be compare the noun standards like we can have a length color electrical properties by having all these parameters or uh, attributes or characteristic we are measuring something that will be considered as what quality then how we are going to measure a software quality that to with the help of certain standards right we'll see the next concept qc qa and cq what it mean so here qc is nothing but quality control quality assurance and we have a control of quality we'll see the first one that is quality control what do you mean by quality control here the quality control involves the series of inspection so here we are assuring or we are giving a certificate for the quality of a software or any of a product here that includes the series of inspections reviews and tests used throughout the software process to ensure each work product meets the requirements placed upon it mainly as per the requirement are we developing a system is the system or a software is consisting or including all the requirements in all the stages of its development that is what we will be checking in the quality control mainly this includes a feedback loop that means in order to satisfy the requirement it can't be static it must have a feedback loop then only we can give our review or a feedback with the help of that it can be improved so that to the process that created the work product so these are the things which you need to remember with respect to quality control then what do you mean by quality assurance that is consist of the auditing and reporting the functions of management so here we are giving a certificate as a qualitative one by performing the auditing and reporting the functions of that management so the main goal of this uh, quality assurance or qa is what to provide the management with the data necessary to be informed about the product quality in the quality assurance they are giving all the data which is necessary in order to say this product is qualitative one so those are the standards which will be giving in the quality assurance next we have a cost of quality and this cost of quality it includes all the cost incurred in the pursuit of quality or in performing quality related activities if i wanted to say any of the product or a project is a qualitative one what are the activities we conducted and how we are checking that quality so in order to do that how much money we require what is the cost it taken in order to find all these things that we are calling that as a cost of quality so these are the different terminologies that you need to remember we'll see the next and very very important topic of this unit that is kokomo model so till now we bothered about time cost and 
number of efforts or number of human resources that we require. So if I wanted to develop any of a software or a product, then we require human resource cost must be there or uh, we ne also need some time, budget, everything is required. Then how we are going to estimate a cost, which is the best way of estimating a cost in order to uh, do or in order to develop any of a product or a project within a given time. So for that, we have a best answer called Kokomo model. Very, very important topic. We'll see now, what do you mean by this Kokomo? It's mainly constructive cost model. So here, Ko, Ko and Mo. So that is what? Constructive cost model. So this is defined or uh, abbreviated as constructive cost model. And it is very famous model. Mainly why we are going to use it? To estimate the cost of a product or a project. So if I wanted to estimate the cost of a project, how much time it will going to take, how much money it has to take in order to develop that particular project, we are estimating it with the help of this Kokomo model. So then who invented this Kokomo model? So this was introduced or proposed by Dr. Barry Bohem in the year 1981. That's why it's also considered as Kokomo 81 because it was invented in the year 1981. That is what the reason we are calling this as the Kokomo 81. And also it refers to a group of models and this is used to estimate the time. That means in terms of months. So if it is a large project or a complex project, it can't be done within a given number of days. It has to be in the terms of months and the number of people that is human resources how much we require that needed to develop a project so with the help of this kokomo model we can find out how much effort or a time we require in terms of month and how much people or a human resource we require with respect to the number of members in a development of a product Next, in the Kokomo, it will be based upon the estimation of lines of code in a system and the time. So, KLOC, that is what? 1000 lines of code. So, how much lines of code? How many thousands of lines of code that we are taking in order to develop a particular project or a product? And what is the time it is taking that we are estimating with the help of this Kokomo. And also it considered as the aspects like project attribute, hardware, what we require, assessment of produce. So these are the activities which is also going to be there in this Kokomo model. And also this provides the transparency to the model which allows the software manager to understand why the model gives the estimate it does. Main important or benefit of having this Kokomo model is all related to its transparency. So whatever the changes we are doing, whatever the function that we are doing with the help of this Kokomo model, everything is visible to the software manager. So they can simply see all the things or the functions which is taking place under this Kokomo model. And also here we can see that projects are categorized into three types. So when it comes to the Kokomo model, we have a three kinds of projects here. One is related to organic project that will be helpful for the small team and those who have a good experience, they can have it. And next we have a semi-detached. So in this, this will be okay or it will be convenient for the medium project and a medium team and they must have certain uh, experience like mixed experience is also okay. Then we have a embedded one. Embedded as the name indicate, it will be a combination of this organic as well as semi-detached. And as per the Bohem or as per the Berry Bohem, project cost estimation should be done through three stages. We have to follow three stages in order to do the estimation of a cost which will going to takes for the particular project. That includes basic Kokomo, intermediate Kokomo and we have a complete Kokomo. So with the help of these three stages, we can estimate the cost of a project as per the Bohem. So we'll see the first one that is related to basic Kokomo. As we all know that if it is a first type, then it will be a first level of estimating a cost. It can be used for quick and slightly rough calculation of a software cost. So here we are not giving a standard cost. Instead of that, we are simply giving a rough cost which will going to take place or which required by the product or project development. Why? Because this considers based on lines of source code, 
together with the constant values obtained from the software project types rather than other factors which have major influence on the software development process as a whole. So mainly why we are considering this as a rough sketch or a rough calculation for the development of a product or a project mainly it is concentrating only on the lines of source code. Source code is what? The code which has been written by the programmer. The computer which understand will be considered as object code. So here we are just finding the lines of code or lines of source code and what are the constant values we have. We are just finding those two. That's why it is only considered as the basic level of having a cost estimation. And also it requires to calculate the efforts which are required to develop in three modes of development that are organic mode, semi-detached and embedded mode. So we have a three kinds of project development, right? So that can be organic or semi-detached or embedded. So in order to have that software project, then how much cost it will going to take, whether it can be organic, semi or uh, embedded one, how much cost it will going to take, that will going to be identified identified or estimated with the help of this basic Kokomo model. So in order to find that we have a basic expression in order to estimate the cost. First here we have a E. E is all about effort applied in a person months. So E stands for effort. Effort in the terms of what? How many persons we require per month? That is what we are calculating here. A into KLOC. That is what? thousands of lines of code, thousand, k in the sense, thousand here. So it can be any number of thousand. So thousands of lines of code, power to B and PM. PM is what? Persons per month. We are finding the effort. And here we have a D, that is development time. So we got to know how many number of people we require. Then what is the time? That is development time. C into effort whole to the power D, that too in the terms of month itself. At last, we require this P, that is effort by time. So, P is the total number of person required in order to accomplish a project. So, how many number of people we require for how many months that we are finding in the P or the total number of person. So here the constant values are what A, B, C as well as D for the basic model of different categories of the system. This definition or this uh, formula is very very important in order to find out what is the cost we require with respect to this basic Kokomo model. We will see the second type that is intermediate Kokomo model. So this is what enhanced version of a basic model. So in this what we are going to do, it is an extension of a basic Kokomo model which include set of cost drivers. So here we do not have a KLOC, that is what we are not bothering about the thousand number of lines of code. Instead of that we also have a set of cost drivers into account in order to enhance more accuracy to the cost estimation model as a result. So here along with the KLOC, we also have this cost or a set of cost drivers that will going to give more accuracy than the basic Kokomo model. So here the estimation model makes the use of a set of cost drivers attribute to compute the cost of software. With the help of this cost driver attribute, we are finding the total cost which may incurred with a particular project or a software and also it will consist of certain uh, constant calculated according to the various software system. We also have a KLOC or uh, lines of code along with that we have a set of cost driver attribute in order to improve the accuracy of cost estimation. So here you can see that the estimated effort and schedule times are given by the relationship that is what effort that in the terms of E is equal to A into KLOC O to the power B into EAF PM. So here we had PM in the basic model. Here a new addition is EAF. What it mean? That is it is an effort adjustment factor which is calculated by multiplying the parameter values of different cost driver parameters. So here we are multiplying the different persons per month or we are multiplying it with different cost driver attributes in order to find out the effort. And also we have a D that is development 
time. So here C into effort whole to the power D which we had already in a basic model. So here you can see that E is nothing but total effort required for the project in the terms of persons per month and also we have a KLOC that specifies the size of the code for the project in kilo lines of code that is kilo in the sense what we are measuring the lines of code in the terms of kilo here and ABCD are the constant parameters for the software project. This is how this intermediate Kokomo model will going to work. So here main concentration is related to EAF. So next we have what detailed or advanced Kokomo model. If it is a detailed one then it could be a combination or a hybrid of first and second type. So it has all the qualities of both basic Kokomo as well as intermediate Kokomo strategies on each software engineering process. So what is the strategy we have in this advanced Kokomo model? So it will going to divide the project or a software into different modules and then we apply the Kokomo in different models. So we also applying a different Kokomo methodology for each module or a different model mainly to estimate the effort and then we sum all the effort. If I have, uh, you just imagine this is my software, I am just going to make it as three modules and I will find the estimation or effort for a module 1 and module 2 and module 3. Then we are summing up all the effort which is taken by different modules. Then we are summing up all the effort. Then we can get to know the what is the cost estimation for that particular product or a project or a software with the help of this advanced or detailed Kokomo model. So here we can see that we have a six phases with respect to the detailed Kokomo model. How it will going to be done? We have a six stages that is planning and requirements, system design, detailed design, module code and test, integration and test, cost constructive model in short that is CCM, cost constructive model. So with the help of these stages, we are going to have this detailed Kokomo model, fine. And also here I have mentioned certain advantages, mainly it will going to be transparent and mainly it is helpful in order to estimate or to understand the impact of different factors in order to affect the project cost, why it is costly, why it is so reliable or affordable. So in order to find that what are the parameter we are taking, everything will going to be given by this Kokomo model and also it provides ideas about the historical project. It also gives the cost estimation of a historical project and also this model is easy to estimate the total cost of the project. So it's all related to what advantages. We'll see the disadvantages now. It is hard to estimate the KDSI that is kilos or thousands of delivered source instructions. Early on the project when most effort estimates are required and uh, this is not a size measure, this is just a length measurement and also it is extremely vulnerable to misclassification of a development mode whether I wanted to go with a semi or organic or embedded one, somehow it is difficult to understand or to classify. Uh, what kind of project it is. Along with that success also always it will be depends on the largely on tuning the model which needs to organization using historical data which is not always available. Sometimes we may rely on the historical data which may not be available and also it limits the accuracy of software cost. It also ignores the customer skills, cooperation and knowledge. Instead of having the opinion from the customer, they are simply going to estimate the cost. Though it will be considered as what uh, one of the famous methodology in order to find out the cost estimation. I hope you all understood today's concept and it's all about your software engineering portions. Let me meet you in the next session with a question paper discussion. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. All the very best. Thank you.